and welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be different as you can tell by the title i am going to be talking about how i saved money while i went to grad school for a ridiculous amount of money <laughs> uh, i just think that this information is something you just can't come across unless you meet someone who's been there and I want to share this and put it out in the world because I think a lot of people experience this, especially within OT, and you just can't get this kind of information unless you happen to know someone who can talk to you about this. So I want to do, take a break from the study material and give you guys, honestly, an honest review of my experience attending a private school for this much money and also what I did in order to save some money along the way. So just to give you a background idea, I think the tuition is different now, but I spent about 120000 give or take. At this point, you know, a couple thousand honestly doesn't make a difference because you're just in so much debt. But um, this is how much I spent. If you're curious as to what school I went to, I went to USC. I was at University of Southern California in LA. It's a great school. It was, um, it's number one in the nation. It might be, it might not be one. It's usually one or two, but it was a great program. And you might be asking me, one, why did you decide to go there? And two, did you regret going after realizing like how much money it was? I think those are kind of the main questions I get. And honestly, I am, I don't regret going to USC at all. I think that I had a great experience and I think that I really learned a lot about myself and about um, what I need, not just in friendships and relationships, but also what I needed to work on moving forward as an OT. And it really was a well-rounded program. So. I have no regrets there, but I also want to preface that by saying that I have no way of knowing if I would have regretted it because I haven't experienced another OT program at the same time for a cheaper price in my life. So it'd be really cool if I could have experienced two different ones and come out with a comparison of which one, but that's just not how life works. So. I took an opportunity of a lifetime and I don't have regrets. Um, I was very thrilled to have gotten accepted into this program. I think that was a very big confidence booster because I didn't think that I was in the running to get into this program. But I got into several other smaller programs that I applied for. They were definitely more cost effective. But I really just wanted to look at the program based on the courses that they had available and what their focus was. And I don't know if it's because USC has so much more funding, but they had such a well-established curriculum. They have a great staff. And I felt like they had some really cool options that I couldn't turn down. So they had classes that um, in your final semester were electives so you could really decide what your interest was at that point and take a more hands-on course about a specific topic. So basically I wanted to share some tips and strategies that I use during the program to save money and share that with you guys all whether you are in school for OT or not because this is going to apply to all of you especially if you are headed into a healthcare field. From the very beginning, when you are comparing programs that have accepted you, you want to email all of them and ask them if they have any scholarships available. There are many cases where there are scholarships available just right off the bat for being accepted, and you might not even have to go through like an application process. It might just be something that you qualify for, but you have to ask. So make sure you ask if there's any scholarship opportunities for like incoming first year students and take advantage of any because they can really help cut down the cost of tuition. After you do that, if you're planning on being very proactive about making extra money throughout your first year and second year, you want to start being proactive and look into a sev several things. So if you are in a healthcare field, then it's likely that there might be a research assistant position. And so you could 
apply for that if that exists, but you want to find out about it early on so that you can benefit from the savings earlier. So typically, if you are a research assistant or a teacher's assistant, you can provide certain services to the school and they will pay you for those services. It's likely that you could be a research assistant the first first year um, and second year, but the teacher's assistant, you might have to wait until your second year of the program. But look into all those details in advance so that you know when the applications are available and if it's worth it to you to invest in that. I think the first year is hard to look into jobs because you're still figuring out how much workload you have from the program. But I had several friends who were research assistants and they also made very good relationships with the professor who's leading the research and that could also lead to a really personal reference letter by the time you graduate and some very good connections. So I think that that is worthwhile if you are willing to set aside some time to do uh, assistant work. Sometimes they're looking for people to fill in positions that are related to the OT department. That might be roles where you are a second year helping first years, or maybe you're helping in the office. There are different jobs that people are always trying to fill, so you just need to be aware of what is available and keep an eye out for it. Something I did during my second year that saved me a lot of money was becoming a resident assistant or an RA. And this isn't for everyone, but I wanted to share my experience about it because it saved me a good $12,000. What happens is they pay for your cost of living and depending on where you are working, if it's like on campus or off campus, you also get a like a meal plan or some kind of food stipend to put towards your groceries. So. The meal plans typically allow you to just have unlimited access to any of the cafeterias on campus, which means that you don't have to pay for any of your meals unless you're trying to go out with your friends to eat, which is really great because you can go in at any time like for breakfast or late lunch. Like it was really easy to do that. And I honestly had a really good time being an RA, but it is a lot of work. I will give you that. And I was glad that I only did it my second year there would have been no way of me going through the training process and application process as a first year. So it worked out that way. But as a second year, I definitely knew what to expect during my program. And I was able to organize and split my workload a lot better to manage both jobs. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice is to take the job as it is and don't stress yourself out and go above and beyond to try to make everything perfect because the job is very fast moving. There's a lot of meetings and uh, event planning and teamwork involved and I think that that can always get really sloppy and messy when you're on a time crunch and my personality type as most OTs are is very organized and structured and I like to you know put my best foot forward and try to make things as as smooth as possible but a lot of times that wasn't possible and you just have to roll with it because uh, not everything is timely and planned in advance. I really tried to use the funding that I received for the building that I worked in for a lot of food-based events so it actually saved me extra money too because I was able to order catering for events and I would get to eat at those events and also provide different food for the students that were in my building so it was a lot of fun and it was enriching overall for me while I was dealing with the stressors of being a student as well so I had a good time and it definitely saved me a lot of money if you end up doing research assistant or a resident assistant or any of these positions, you get more hands-on experience and one-on-one time with individuals who could be a great reference for you. So that's always a plus. Some other ways that I save money, whenever I had to buy books for a class, I always tried to get used books. So you could compare the prices at the bookstore for their used ones and also check eBay and Amazon. Amazon usually has the new books but if you're lucky you can find cheaper versions on ebay depending on the availability and popularity of that book and i would also try to network with your 
second year students. So when you're a first year and you have second year OTs or whoever is in your program, if you know one or two of them, ask them like, hey, what are you planning on doing with your books? If they're not planning on keeping it and they want to sell it, then they know that they could try to sell it to you for maybe a cheaper price and you don't have to pay full price for it. So that's another way to do it. A lot of these books were also available at our school library for rent. So if you are comfortable with going in and kind of renting a book that's short, then you can also do that to save some money. I also saved my books to sell immediately to the first years if possible and networked with them. If you hold on to books for a really long time, they tend to lose value fast because every year like a new edition comes out. So if you aren't keeping your books, then go ahead and try to plan to sell it early. The other ideas that I wanted to share are all actually free ways to save money and these are all things that I have tried so I'm not giving you anything that's like oh this is scammy I, I'm not dealing with that I'm giving you things I have been using for years and actually still use because they save me money so these are all free apps that I want to share with you and I'm going to start off with something called Swagbucks. this is something that you can use on your browser much like Google as a search engine, but it also has a lot of cashback options, such as if you're shopping at Macy's, then you click to their Macy's cashback and you go through that link and then you purchase your whatever you're buying and you will get cashback for that. You get random points for using their search engine. They also have videos that you can watch for points as well as surveys and some other ways to do it. But basically for doing nothing, when you're just using your regular like search engine browser, you earn points and all those points get accumulated and you can cash it out for various gift cards. And the gift cards get cashed out and sent to you within a week. So it is legitimate. I've been using this app for years. So you can use it on your computer and you can have it on your phone and it honestly saves you a lot of money. If you are buying a plane ticket and you want to get some extra cash back, you can also use their affiliates and you can get like, you know, something between two to three percent or sometimes they have like 10 percent cash back. So go ahead and look into that. What I'm going to do is add all my little referral codes for these down in the comment section so that you could get some extra bonuses for signing up through. The other app that I used a lot was Shopkick. Shopkick is one of my favorites right now because when I was in grad school, every time I'd go grocery shopping, I would use this app. The cool thing about this one is that you basically turn on your Bluetooth and you go into random stores that are affiliated to this app and almost all of them are in there, Target, Walmart, your, your grocery stores, they're all in there. So when you go, you can scan items that are listed on the app and you earn points for them immediately. So that's really cool. And you also get points for walking into certain settings. So randomly, I would open them up, especially during holidays, because you get more points usually when it's like Black Friday time. So that's really nice. And in addition to that, you can also attach your like Visa credit card. And what happens is every time you shop at any of their affiliate stores like Marshalls and TJ Maxx, you get a point per dollar you spend and it automatically does it for you whenever you just use that affiliated card. So without doing anything, when you're just doing regular shopping, you earn points through that method. But you can also scan and um, do all the extra things. They also have options to watch some short videos for points. Ibotta or Ibotta is very similar to Shopkick, but it's more coupon based. So think of a digital app that has a lot of coupons. You can scan in your receipts and get cash back on items that you purchased, or you can look at the app in advance and see what they are offering coupons in. So you might be able to save, you know, 250 on a specific brand of seltzer water or cereal. Uh, or if you're lazy like me, you could just use it by scanning in your receipt and seeing if any of your purchases qualify for a um, discount. So that's really easy to use. And the other app that I use that not as many people know about is called Achievement. And all these apps are free. This one is probably the easiest one for you to download if you use a health tracker of some sort, such as Samsung Health. Fitbit, Apple Watch. What it does is it syncs with your watch and it uses the metrics of how many steps you've taken or how many calories you've burned 
or any of those things, any of those vari variables, and it gives you points for being healthy, basically. And once those points just rack up on their own in the background, it will just automatically sync the points up for you and you can randomly check in and see, hey, I've met the threshold for $10 and you can cash it out for PayPal. So that's really easy, especially because you really don't have to do anything for that except to sync your watch. I hope this video was helpful. I know it's super long, but this is information that I wish I had known. So I wanted to pass it along to you guys. If you have any other recommendations that you want to share with the people who are watching this, please leave it in the comments below. I'd be happy to see what other ways you guys have found worked to save money. And yeah, we want to share the love. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Take care.